right, it is finally time for the 2R, second gen 2R, large frame, and 3E solution. Now this 3E solution goes all the way back to 2008, so if you've got a tractor that starts with a 3 and ends with an E, uh, this is the solution for you. If you've got a 2017 or later, 2 series, 2R series, um, that is, uh, actually it's a 203XR, uh, I guess is how you would say it. So the X being, it could be a, a 32, a 36, or a 38R, uh, depending on where, where you live. You may have X, may or may not have access to the 36, but um, it works on, on all of those tractors. And so, um, let me go ahead and get started. I'll get us prepped. And this won't be as comprehensive as the one series video. And, uh, and it's mainly because some of these things are a little more straightforward and things that uh, most of you might have some, some experience, whether it's on this tractor or on a car or something like that, uh, you'll have similar experience. And this is an example here. You have to take the front drive shaft off and that comes off just like almost every other uh, universal joint where you have two clips that are holding it on. So you see there, I've just taken one bolt off of each one and, um, and just dropped the U-joint out. There is a shroud there that goes on that aluminum piece. Um, obviously, it's just a couple bolts to take it off as well. Now, looking back towards the back, it just slides on to that um, uh, spline shaft, so just pull it forward and it'll come right off and your tractor will look just like this. It'll be a two-wheel drive. Probably dropped a good 5,000 in value just by taking that off. So, the next thing we're going to take off, and it'll be a little more TV magic as I mentioned with this, is this um, linkage for the brake here. It's pointing here, I guess. And the reason to take this off is, uh, as you can see, too many shadows. This is where the suction tube that comes out of the um, the transaxle that sucks up into here goes into the filter element and then comes over to this area. That's where it connects into the hydraulic pump. By taking this off we give ourselves a little more room to work here as well as here when we're um, taking some of these things loose. And uh, so I'll do that really off camera, um, at least on the brake piece, and then I'll show you the, the, you know, the details of what I did. Um, again, some of these are really straightforward, so we're trying to make this video a little more succinct. One of the disadvantages of using an external mic means that on occasion it will come unplugged and you won't get your audio, so I'm going to voice over this part. I've got the brake uh, linkage removed and we're using spring or John Deere uses spring clamps use your pliers pulled it back on on the tube that connects from this filter element over to the hydraulic pump and once you get your head under here you'll see it it's pretty straightforward uh, if you see at the bottom there I have a catch pan for the fluids going to come out between this filter element and the pump and this is really the only fluid that you're going to, to lose. You can see in my hand there also have a, a cap that after that fluid, initial fluid drains out, uh, I'm providing that in the kit so that you can keep your workspace clean. So you put that on, make sure you don't have any surprise drips after you've been working a bit uh, underneath the tractor. So just let that drain out and we'll move up underneath the tractor next to uh, remove it from the pump side. So here on the pump side, same thing, spring clamp, use your pliers to release the pressure, move it back uh, so that it's not hanging on to uh, the, the pump any longer. And then you'll have to orient your tube so that you can get it out that hole with the spring clamp uh, still there. You know, One option would be to take the tension off the spring clamp and while you're doing that pull the hose off and, and leave the spring clamp uh, where it comes off the or the effectively left side as you're seeing it here 
Um, you can definitely do that if you have trouble getting it through that hole, but I think the hole's plenty large enough. If you just spin it a bit, you'll be able to get it out without any trouble. So I'm repositioning the camera here and I'm bumping it because there's just not a lot of room when you're trying to do this and show it on camera. But you can see here, uh, again, the right side of your screen is the left side of the tractor, but you've got two socket head uh, cap screws that are holding the pump to the housing. And then on the right side of the tractor, you also have the implement line as well as the steering line. And those, these are the pressure side. Now, what I'm just pointing to there is the steering compression nut. It's 13 sixteenths. The fitting on the other side that goes into the pump is a three quarter. On the implement side, those are both five sixteenths. So uh, take these loose, back them off, and then go ahead and take the fittings out of the pump. You will put those fittings into your new Hydros Plus pump uh, once you actually install it onto the tractor. So at this point, we've taken off the lines and the fittings to give us full access. And if you see on the left side, I've already inserted the special tool, which is essentially a very short eight millimeter bit for, um, for loosening these bolts. So these are eight millimeter socket caps. And then uh, the other piece of the special tool is this ratcheting um, stubby eight millimeter wrench. And you need this wrench because anything longer, much longer than this wrench, as you can see to the left right there, close to my thumb, if you have a longer uh, wrench, it's going to hit that. You're just not going to have enough range of movement to do anything if you um, have a longer wrench. Now, what I'm showing here, and obviously I was talking through this, but one of the options would be to put that wrench on, put a socket or something uh, that you can get over it and, and basically create a cheater bar so you can break it loose. Um, another, a lot of people use and I use often is a take another box end wrench and take the closed end and, and hook it in. If you know how to do that, you might be able to do it, but the angles are a little bit funny, so it may or may not work for you. Now, what I'm showing here is the method that works best for me because both ends of this wrench are eight millimeter. So go get your eight millimeter Allen. Uh, you can get, you know, your shorter or longer one. You don't need a whole lot of torque here, but put it in the open end side of that wrench, stabilize it, and then you effectively have a cheater bar. There is a possibility that you might have a longer Allen wrench or, um, you know, something longer than the, the wrench here. And if the head of the bolt is oriented just right, you might be able to get it in so that you could break it loose um, just with a typical Allen wrench, the L Allen wrench. So uh, any way you want to do it, but it will take a little bit of force to get it broken loose. Uh, didn't look like I put much force on it there because I've already had this pump off in the past. And uh, But the first time that I did it, it was a little bit tougher. You might spend a, another minute or two more than, than you saw me spend on this one. Now moving over to the other side, and I generally try to work from the bottom, um, but I do want to show coming in from the side, you may end up doing that to break it loose. Now when you're taking this pump off, and I show it a little bit later in this video, because of the orientation of the, the inlet there, and just how close that bolt is, and you can't see it here, but there is interference, and that's exactly why you need the special tool. You could probably get by without the special tool on uh, the right side of the tractor, but on the left side of the tractor, you absolutely have to have this, and it cannot be uh, a situation, you know, that if, if you have a standard eight millimeter bit, that's too long. It's going to bump into that, and you're not gonna be able to get your wrench on. So now taking this off, uh, as you loose, you break it loose and you loosen up, your bolt, you can start to back your uh, pump away. When, as long as you have the left side off, you can start to back your pump away and continue to have that same amount of room. Whenever you go to put it back on, you won't be able to start 
the way the pump is right now. You'll have to pull it off just a bit so that you can get your wrench and your bit and your bolt all in the right spot. And But you'll get it started and, and it goes on very easy. These bolts are such that if it wasn't so slippery, you might be able to tighten them pretty much all the way down with your fingers. But by the time there's another spot uh, in the video that you have to uh, basically set the pump up to be primed and uh, the pump will likely be very slip, slippery at that point. So we'll get there in just a bit. Now I'm not going to show me taking this completely off. Once you've, you know, gotten this far, you get the sense of it. But I'll just talk a little bit while I'm doing this uh, each side. That, and you can use whatever you might want to use to do this. You don't have to use this wrench here. If you happen to have maybe a stubby ball end, long uh, Allen, you might be able to get it to go up towards the front of the tractor. If it's as long or longer than the pump you might be able to get, you know, use some of your other tools you have in your bag to make this easier. But if you use this stubby wrench, you know, the challenge you're going to have is that bit wants to worm its way out. Uh, and also when you start to get the bolt out just a bit, it gets really easy. So, um, you know, you're going to have to put some tension on it. And keep in mind, I'm doing this while trying to not get my big head and and arms in the way of a camera. Uh, this is a little easier than I'm making it look here. Um, so all that to say, um, this this right side bolt is is pretty straightforward. Just keep a finger on the bolt for tension. Keep a finger on the end of the bit so it doesn't warm its way out, and just move at about a five degree in increment until you back this bolt all the way out. So now we're moving to the other side, a little bit different. As I mentioned, the inlet's in the way, but we now have a hole in the side of the housing that can help us. And I chose to use that hole to get the bit in into the, the socket cap. And then I've already broken it loose from the bottom. Uh, and we're just now just going to start working it out. Now I've taken the left side completely out. Uh, we'll do this a little bit differently on install, but I recommend going how to do that or just leaving it in just a bit so that, you know, if you're worried that it might fall, then then you can go ahead and leave a few threads on the right side of the tractor, left side of your screen. But ultimately, same type of thing. The only thing to note is as the wrench bumps up against the inlet, you know, it's going to pull the pump away from its housing totally fine in this case. You're not going to get pinched or stuck in any place. Now when we put it back on, we will have to be mindful of of how we, the sequence with, that we do it, so that you don't get in a situation that you can't get your wrench and the bit uh, into that bolt. So here we are just now getting that bolt out. And as I mentioned, you know, the pump's hanging up there by itself, no problem. Even though I don't have a bolt in the other side, that might be a good idea to leave a couple threads on the other sides because it's so easy to access. You can just pull it off. But once you get both bolts off, go towards the front of the tractor and then pull it out the bottom. So what we're talking about here is is this is not a pressurized area. It does have an O-ring for sealing. Um, as you can see, just above there is the gear that turns the hydraulic pump. That gear is on the input shaft from the engine, and that gear is the same size. So that's why it's one-to-one. -one. Um, you've got a coupler there, uh, a lot of rust, interesting enough. But um, you're not going to have a whole lot of fluid rush out of here. Since it's not under pressure and it's not really filled, you can see just to the uh, right side there, you have that line that brings oil up to the gear and then it drains back to the sump. All right, here we are. So, uh, new pump. Looks familiar. Looks very similar. It is very... Uh, actually very similar even in length even though the 
displacements quite a bit more. So uh, if you've watched my other video, you've, you've seen this portion, um, but I'll go through it again just in case for those who haven't seen it. And there are, I'm going to go ahead and do on the bench here a couple of uh, things that, that you have to do, and, and I'll explain those as well. So um, let's get the gear first. So um, I recommend an impact so that makes things easier. And, you know, this gear... There's just no good way to hold on to it. So whenever you, whenever you, if you have to take it off, uh, kind of the old-fashioned way with a wrench or ratchet, uh, without marring the gear, it's, it's really tough to do. Uh, other thing I'll mention, we'll go ahead and take this off. You've got your O-ring here. Now I don't plan on providing the O-ring. If, if you've seen the previous video, and, and I'll kind of talk through it when we go to put it back on, uh, you know, this, this is certainly to, to seal, seal this against the transaxle, but there's no pressure in here. And as long as you don't break this O-ring, it's going to hold what it is that you need to keep back there. So um, that's one thing, and you know, I'm not saying nobody's going to pinch an O-ring, but I've had it off multiple times, and uh, I don't think that's a high risk. But uh, if it does start to happen where people are having issues with O-rings, I will start providing those. I just don't think. Kind of the same thing with the 1 Series, if you're familiar. Uh, it does have a gasket between the pump and the, the trans axle, just, just like this. Uh, it's not an O-ring, it's a gasket. But even on very old machines, hold this here. Uh, on very old machines, you don't have any issue. So, um, this is a three jaw puller. You can get one at Harbor Freight, AutoZone, probably Walmart. Uh, it's a very simple puller. Uh, you you all you could probably do it with a two jaw, but three jaws ideal. Very inexpensive. Uh, and if you don't want to buy one, if this is the only application you'll use it for, you can go to AutoZone or some other auto parts stores, and just rent it. And when I say rent it, you're not even renting it, you're borrowing it. Uh, you'll give them 50 bucks uh, and you'll take it home. And as long as you bring it back, you get your 50 bucks back. And it doesn't matter if you break it or not. Uh, break it uh, or don't break it, bring it back, 50 bucks goes back in your pocket. So um, I've had this off. So you may have a little uh, more pressure and a more satisfying pop when yours comes off. Mine probably won't. Uh, by the way, this was an 18 millimeter, so this is metric. Now on mine, this isn't metric. I think it's a three quarter, but that pretty much aligns. It may be 11 sixteenths. Uh, pretty much aligns. Right, that popped pretty good. So pulled this right off, no problems. Set this guy to the side. Set this guy to the side. We no longer need him. And. But sure, and this only goes one way, and this is machined so that when you apply the proper amount of torque, which happens to be 37 foot-pounds, um, or probably doesn't have to be, but somewhere right in that 37 foot-pound range, it's going to pull onto this and it will not go any farther. You're going to have uh, the, the proper spacing that you need. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, well, let me back off here. Something else that I am going to provide as a bit of insurance is this. So this is Vibratite. If you've got Loctite of your own, you decide you want to use red. I went with blue just in case. Red will still come off, but it for this application, we probably don't even need blue. But as an extra bit of insurance, I'm planning on sending this and letting you decide if you want to put it on or not. Um, Go ahead and put some, come on, tell me I made, the, tell me I did it right. Oh, I did it. The little, the Viper tight here. This is the blue version similar to Loctite where it, it will be able to be taken off without, oh, got a neat washer on here. It will be taken off without heat in the future. So I'm going to put this on. I mentioned moment I gotta get some paper towels here 
Now, unfortunately, I have access to tools that you guys don't. Um, and this, you know, this is a very hard thing to hold on to. So if you try to put it into a vise like this, really probably not going to be successful. You could put it into a vise like this, but you want to make sure you have soft jaws. Um, this is a challenging part, but not really uh, something we can't overcome. Uh, again, 37 foot pounds uh, is, is the torque spec on this. Again, if you try to do this, um, and I don't have my torque wrench visible at least right here, you know, we'll start to pull it on. And actually, if you, if you were to do the measuring, you know, between here and here, it would, that would basically be about as far as it's going to go on. Um, but again, uh, I have the luxury of having some special tools, but I can't show them to you because I know you're going to be really jealous. So let me just take it over to my torque wrench. There we go. Okay. So, uh, you know, my special tool clicks like a torque wrench. You might have heard it there, uh, but it... Um, has the ability to torque this on at least to 37 foot pounds without uh, really having to hold on to this too tightly. So, uh, sorry you don't have that tool at your disposal, um, but you know, do your best to get the 37 foot pounds on here uh, with the tools that you have available. All right, so next thing, and this one is going to be uh, you know, I, I know that at least a few people are going to have uh, a little bit of reservation here, and my counsel to you is don't. And what I mean by that, it, this is what uh, the John Deere uh, service manual calls for. And um, I have tried a couple of methods, and this is the one that works. So we're going to have a little bit of fluid here, and this one works just you know, it's what's recommended and no surprise that it actually works. So I will send you, uh, may not be this brand, this is CBS brand, but uh, some 100% pure petroleum jelly. Uh, and if you have, whether you have industrial petroleum jelly or probably wouldn't recommend the one with the cocoa butter, but um, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, uh, you want to use you're open to using but I am going to send this along because mainly because I don't want you all using the baby fresh version uh, We don't really need our tractor smelling baby. I don't really have anything against our tractor smelling baby fresh, but um, I Don't know I might get made fun of I, I don't know. It's just it just doesn't seem like a good idea but so take the petroleum jelly that I send you it's 100% it is unscented and uh, pack it in here and start turning, uh, you know, kind of the direction I see here, or I'm showing you here, and start moving that petroleum jelly into the gears. And you'll see it eventually come out here and wait till it comes through both sides. You're not going to be able to see that, but you, you see what I'm doing here, right? You just pack it into the suction side. Um, and then when you do, you turn it. And it's going to start coming out the other side. I have to clean that up. You can see it's coming out the top because this is most directly aligned to that. But um, it will eventually make its way out to the uh, steering side. And you know you can pick some of this up, put it back in went through. Now, um, if you don't know, petroleum jelly is one of those things that's kind of interesting. We use it for, um, you know, chapstick, uh, dry skin, whatever it might be. And uh, it is a petroleum product. It is 100% hydrocarbons. It comes out of the, actually, I don't think it comes out of the fracking process, but the some of the if you if you look it up and I did look it up because I was like hmm that, that not that I didn't trust the service manual I was just like I'm curious if you know you end up with petroleum jelly in your 
hydraulic fluid, do you really need to change it? And the answer to that is no, um, because it is a hydrocarbon just like hydraulic fluid. So I've got, I kept packing in, kept turning it. You can see we've got it in both places here, right? So we've got this packed. And just so you know, um, from the service manual, this is the recommendation uh, to pack it with petroleum jelly, just as we're doing here. And it says that if you have trouble getting it to prime, after about 15 seconds or so of running, you can add um, pressurized air. So I, I did uh, pressurized air. Uh, I actually did that without the petroleum jelly just to see if that would work. Like, would it pick up um, without having to put petroleum jelly? And the answer for me was no. Um, I wasn't able to get it to pick up. And um, pack this full. And I put, you can put up to five PSI into the, um, into the tank, you know, and, and also just do this because, you know, I, I know that somebody out there like me was, is probably thinking, look, you know, I'm going to see if it'll pick up so I don't have to put petroleum jelly into my hydraulic fluid. I just, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Again, it's a hundred percent hydrocarbons. It'll be fine. Um, but uh, I did it with the pressure alone, and I actually gave it like 10 or 15 PSI, and I was not able to get it to prime. And I think the, the main reason is, um, if you remember in the video, uh, you, the, the hydraulic pump, or not hydraulic pump, hydraulic filter is in that suction line. And so that pressure is really not going to push fluid very easily through the hydraulic filter and uh, I think that ends up being the problem. So a uh, packet full of petroleum jelly that will be provided. Uh, don't forget your Loctite for this. You can use the Loctite on here if you, if you like. Uh, there's plenty of it to use, um, but um, I don't think it's actually necessary. Um, so we're ready to go. So next stop, this thing cleaned off. It's going to be slippery, so be careful with it. Next stop is putting it back on the tractor. So before I get under the tractor, I want to show you, uh, I think I'll refer to it like as a theory of operation because it's going to be hard to show you when I get the pump in there because you won't have a good vantage point. You'll be able to see this in real life, but like camera angle uh, makes it almost impossible. So if you think about this, this pump would, this is what it would look like from the left side of the tractor as you're sitting on it. So. Uh, this is where that hole is for the suction tube. And the only thing, the need for the special tool here has to do with the orientation of this suction side to this bolt hole. And so I'll show you, as you put it in, you can see there is some effectively interference. And so you have uh, that's why you need such a small Allen key here. And then let me get my this going right. And so, you know, as we do this outside of the tractor, and it's not much tougher inside, actually, I need to turn this over. But you can see the getting this in, if we were to start as an example, uh, and oh, come on, come back. And, and we went ahead and, and cinched this up because if you're like me, your, your natural tendency is actually for the other bolt to put it in and, and tighten it down so that you can pull the pump against the, the housing and then you can go and put this in. Well, here's what happens. When you pull it against the housing, you put this bolt in, right? And I'm using my finger like this, the housing. Well, now you can't, you say you get it started, and you, let's just say we get it this far. Well, now you have to turn it with your fingers, and maybe you can, but let me tell you, there's a lot of Vaseline on this thing. You have to turn it down to where you can get this in, and then you have to be able to get this in, 
after that. So that means you have to tighten it basically to almost all the way with your fingers that are slick from Vaseline before you can actually get enough room to get your wrench in and then you can you know tighten it up the rest of the way. So what you're going to need to do when you get in here is um, on the other side go ahead and and start the bolt here just so it'll hang up there right don't need to go all the way in you need to have enough you can go in some but you need to have enough wiggle room here on this side that when you put this bolt in you can effectively kind of push it down here and there'll probably be a little gap here um, you can push it down far enough that you can get this on from the bottom and then get your wrench on here and at that point go ahead and tighten this one all the way down and then take your special wrench over to the other side go ahead and tighten that one up so that's how it's going to work um, I want to show it to you out here because as I get inside there and I'm trying to do this without getting in front of the camera I'm not sure how successful I'm going to be so now let's do it for real all right, now that we've shown you how to do it externally, just going to do it under the tractor. So, and what I would recommend doing, and that's what I did here, is, uh, well, one, make sure your O-ring is on. And then, without sticking your fingers in the Vaseline, if you can, put the pump in butt first and get the bolt on the I think it's the right side of the tractor the opposite the side opposite the suction tube and get it started just mostly as a safety measure now here's what I did and I recommend this if you have some simple green degreaser or just some soapy water. Get some of that and wash your pump. And wash the ends of your bolts because once you get it packed with Vaseline, you're going to have Vaseline on everything. And you're probably going to stick your finger in this hole accidentally. Um, try not to do that so you can keep everything dry. But if you can keep everything dry and tight you'll have a better chance of threading it on without having to use uh, any of the wrenches until later on in the process so can't really see this very well so you kind of have to just do it by feel. Actually, if I took this camera, I can do it this way. And you can see it, or I can see it. You might not be able to see it. You can see that I'm, I've got some started. Let's see if I can move the camera. I just made a little crack here for myself. And then with my hands on both sides, I'm trying to just get it started. And I have. So like I said, when I was outside, I'm going to do with my wrench. Make some room. Oh, this is better. I can see now. And you know, you can either try to use your two fingers and put that in. Another way to do it. If I can get this going the right direction, that's not the right direction, is you can put your bit into the wrench. You make enough room. Oh, do, come on, stay. You make enough room. I can't do it without getting in the way of the camera. I'm trying, but I can't. Let's see here. You're just gonna have to. <laughs> Hang on. I'm gonna have to switch up here. Okay. Let's 
Trying to stay out of the camera's way, but I'm not going to be able to do that. So once I get it on here, there we go, falls into place. I'm going to be going to the right and as you can see we got it in and we're going <laughs> to, you can see it's like a maybe a sixteenth of a turn here. Just stick with it. And you'll get it and what I'm doing you can actually get this decently from this hole here let's see here let's see my finger yeah I just have I got my my finger stuck in the end of it here just turning it and it is slow going but it will go, oh man, have patience. Okay, now that I got it started far enough and I'm, we're kind of close, I brought the, the wrench back down here below versus going through the side. And that's because you, you have to go through the side at the very end when it's the furthest out but once you get close enough on this i prefer to do it from the bottom it's just easier to get to and you get more range of motion here so this will make you know get it started through the side hole here move it down and once you have enough room i would recommend coming down to the bottom to get it tightened up close and we want to make sure well that was a little too tight loosen that up so I can oops get it snugged in here we'll work on the other side so at this point we're home free I won't make you watch me tighten these up but you get the idea And, you know, it goes pretty fast from here. All right. We have them on, and they are torqued down. And what I mean by that is I took the wrench, this tiny wrench, and tightened them as tight as I could. Now, for mine, because I will likely have this off again uh, in the not-too-distant future for one reason or another to show you all, differences in stock and, and different pumps. I didn't put Loctite, but that's the uh, other uh, use for the Loctite. You have it on the, the end nut and then for the nuts here. Um, because the torque spec for these cap screws is 46 and a half foot pounds. That is a lot of torque for a stubby wrench like this. Um, but also, uh, you're not going to be able to get your torque wrench in here. Uh, there is a special tool that connects this to the torque wrench. And actually, I'm not sure if it will work with this particular tool. In the manual, they recommend a snap-on wrench um, that looks like this, but it has this on both ends. Well, snap-on doesn't sell that anymore. Now, well... I was not able to find where they sell it, so I think it was discontinued. Uh, but then there is an adapter for that goes inside the other end of the, the box end wrench, uh, and you can connect your torque wrench, and you can put the specific amount of torque. Well, that wrench is, or that adapter is about eighty-eight dollars, uh, so it's very specific, and I don't I'm not going to use it uh, I'm using Loctite and the uh, hand torque method of, of going as tight as you can 
So now that we have that on there, um, we'll go ahead and start putting these back on. Check your O-rings. They should be in good shape. But if you do see uh, an issue with the O-ring, it's probably better to go ahead and change it now. Wouldn't be a huge deal because you know these these aren't hard to access. All right. So the next thing I'll do, and while we're down here, I'm not even going to get out, is get this tube and orient yourself to the part that should go here. Go ahead and put it on. Now you may have to get your, well, hang on. You do have to be aware of where you're uh, I thought I had it, but then I did it. Your clamp is, and I think it, if it's to the side a little bit, it is a little bit easier to the back side. You can't see me adjusting this, but. You got a little more room the back side, the problem is it gets hard to reach it. So once you get it in here, go ahead and turn it so that you can get to it. And then start moving it to where you need it to go. supposed to be the hard part but before I get it all the way on there I do want to put the other piece on let's see here I'll just show it here I think so what I'm gonna do is pull my little mat I might have a little bit of hydraulic fluid come out here but let's see can you see pull this cap off your hose on. This clamp should be easy to deal with. I think I need a bigger bite is my problem. I make a tool especially for these spring clamps, but I don't have one. And if you don't know spring clamps, you might think to yourself, well, you know, why you use a spring clamp over just a worm gear clamp? And, you know, in some cases it makes sense because it's actually hard to get a worm gear clamp in. But the reason they use these clamps is because uh, they, with the temperature changes, they keep a constant uh, force. So there are situations that because uh, the change in temperature on a worm gear, since it does not it's always kind of the same, it could loosen up a bit and they don't want that to happen. So these spring clamps, even when they get hot or cold, they basically give the same amount of tension. Okay, that's it. Now we have a new pump, we have everything tightened on. We have our, our uh, suction hose hooked up. I can't see my finger, but I was pointing over there to the suction hose. And uh, next, well, really what's left is the uh, brake linkage here and the drive shaft. But before we do that, in case we have to take this back off, we'll go ahead and start the tractor and get the uh, pump primed and ensure our hydraulics work. All right, here we are next day because I finished this up late in the evening and uh, did not want to start it at that point, but we are ready to start it. So um, we have the pump in, it's full of petroleum jelly. Um, 
So far, I have not put the drive shaft or that linkage back on. Uh, that's because if this doesn't prime for us and we can't get it to prime, we'll have to pull the pump back off. I have not had to do that with the petroleum jelly method, but uh, I did have to do that when I tried air only. So, um, you know, don't put everything back together just yet. So here's my recommendation on how you want to do this. Go ahead and take your uh, three point, let it down, right? Also, while you're at it, and I've already checked mine, check your hydraulic fluid. You will not have lost enough to make a difference during this install, but in case you've been running different implements that may have taken that fluid from you uh, and you're already low, um, you might wanna make sure you at least have enough that you're not sucking any air. Now I push the uh, three point back up to the top and that's because I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank it over and start it. Now, what I'm gonna watch for is the rock shaft to come up within, you know, 15 to 20 seconds. So if it doesn't come up by then, uh, I may wait another few seconds and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut it off and see if I've missed something, make sure there's no leaks. Um, anything like that. Not as big a deal on this one because we don't have any hydraulic hoses off except those two on the side. Um, but with the, the one series, there was a few more connections and on occasion, I would find out that I had not tightened something uh, the way I should have. So let's go ahead, start her up. Remember, you know, the, there's no fluid. It will take a second for sure because there's no fluid from the filter forward. We know it's prime now. Let's see what the load resistance does. That right there is at 1,000 RPMs. I don't know how that looks from your perspective, but it's quite a bit faster. At least an idle. I can't do this with my left hand, so I'm trying to do two functions at once, but I cannot do it at all with my left hand. So, there we are. Um, everything is plumbed and primed. Uh, at this point, what you want to do is go ahead and put your uh, brake linkage back on your uh, front drive shaft for the multi or the manual four wheel drive. So you can increase the value of your tractor. Uh, like I said, at least $5,000, but that was it. Um, I will probably make a different install video uh, in the future, but I think this one will get you through. And uh, certainly if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Thanks for watching.